Well, it's the hope that kills you, isn't it? Welcome back to The Grey Cricketer, brought to you by ACCO, India's leading digital insurance company. My name is Ian Higgins. Sam Perry sits across the land from me. Pezzy lad, you know what? I didn't see this game going five days into the last session, but uh, you got to respect the hustle. you got to respect the fight. Got a bit flat, looked like maybe. Maybe Australia's bowls weren't good enough. Maybe England batted well. Maybe it's 2-0. Uh, how are you? Mate, I'm well, thanks. Yep, got myself a beer. Six points in nice. the bag because this is club cricket. Uh, don't yep. really know what else to say. I think that, you know, in time we'll forget that England staged a little bit of a vigil and it's just going to be a 200 and whatever the fuck run win um, secured yeah. with an hour and a bit to go. Cheers. Yeah. Uh, by the start of the day, well, obviously England were chasing 468 to win. They started the day four for 82. They trailed by 386. They're all out for 192. Australian by 275 runs. Put today to me, though, in grey terms. Woo! Is that a song, boys? <laughs> Isn't it? Hey, six six points for a song. Isn't that it? Yeah. You know, it was... Look, they didn't get the wickets uh, as, as quickly or as dominantly as they wanted to. I'm going to talk about it later, but the wicket basically died after about 10 overs. Mm. And they had to, you know, as I say, work hard. It was slow, mm. it was slow going. England did something in the game. Wokes and Butler did bat well. And... Um, but, you know, Australia just had too much space in between them and, them and England. And um, really, if England had managed to do something in the first innings, then maybe they might have walked away from this game with a draw. But they didn't. Yeah, that's pretty much just, that's England cricket's MO for the last five years. Do something in the first innings and maybe they wouldn't have uh, found themselves in this position. But, uh, but hey, here we are. Give me the three things. Three things here, guys. I want to start with Joss's vigil. I thought today was about... Joss Butler, there was a lot hanging over his head in terms of his, well, you know, in, from various commentary boxes they were talking about uh, his career. And um, mm. he staged a vigil. He has had an unbelievable roller coaster of a test match, you know. I was there on day mm. one hearing the echoes and howls of laughter as he dropped mm. Manus Labuskakni. And uh, then he was taking hangers, and he was dropping other catches, and then he was getting completely worked out by Stark in the first innings, and then he nearly played one of the all-time innings to bring it home for England. Um, mate, the bloke, mate. the bloke needs a counsellor, like with respect, for yeah. a while. That was there was a lot going on for Joss in this match. Um, is he is he in many ways man of the match? Like the match is actually about him because like the roller coaster that he took us all on, like it was a choose your own adventure for a bit. But he kind of like went back a bit, then like decided that was that adventure wasn't any good, and chose like his own adventure for a bit, and then, you know, like I don't know what else can go farcically wrong on this tour because like, you know, he he got that edge early on. He must have been on zero of Stark, and it goes between Carey and Warner, and you know, I reckon Australia would have wanted to take that chance. You know, uh, you That's know, had, had they, when they were walking when they were walking on the field in the final session, I reckon they would have been thinking, oh, I wish we took that catch. But from there, like, just fucking, uh, he, he batted superbly. And he, he looks like he was the last bit, he was the last vigil of hope, you know. It was a ray of lights so that we could see being like, well, let's have a look at Boxing Day. And then, like, that's the entire series. If it's not the captain getting hit in a dick or wickets off no balls or drop catches or selections or the coach saying that we expected this, it's the guy getting himself in that position and then stepping on his stumps. Oh, hang on. I mean. Hang on. He, <laughs> sorry. He didn't step on him. He kicked him. He you know, him like, over. like he, mate, he kicked him. He he's, Fuck. he staged a two hundred ball vigil, <laughs> basically compensating for a lot of the comedy that he provided early on in the game. Look, he dropped. Yeah, it happens, but let's call it comedy. Sure, he did all that hard work, and then he he kicked him like it. Literally, it ended in farce. Yeah, again, again, like it was a sort of dismissal that again prompts howls of laughter. And Ewing from the opposition. <laughs> oh, mate, Patrick, you, Ewing. you said this from from basically. That's right. One of the one of the great all time forwards mm. in the NBA. Um, you said this. <laughs> you said this uh, earlier. Like England making it very hard to 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 stop us from you know Ewing and yapping. I mean, it's bad enough they've got to put up with the commentary. You know, the the the, the, the sort of feed that they're getting. You know, through BT Sport or whatever. But 
But then just the Yahoo, like, like when's it end? I mean, it's just, it's just free kick after free kick. It feels like kicking a dead dog, but like, you gotta, you gotta respect the innings. 200 balls. Uh, some stats saying that like Tim Payne's never batted that long. Felt like a weird stat, that one, because he doesn't play anymore. But, you know, I, I respect that as well. You gotta respect the banter on both sides. So I appreciate that. But, uh, but then he, he does that. Then he turns around and kicks him over. Like what? Like what am I supposed to do with that? Am I supposed to be like, ah, oh, you know, like do nothing with that? Like that—that yeah. that made me feel things that I haven't felt in decades. Oh, uh, you know, when the like um, the movement of your eyes is heading out to cover point with where the ball went, and then you see that the players are converging on Joss Butler, like they're about to tackle him. The bales have gone off. You're like, did he chop on? I swear, I saw the ball go off to cover. Yeah. That was my experience of it. I couldn't work out what, right. what had gone on. Um, mm. You don't see hit wicket every day, but yeah, I mean, it just goes to show out in Australia. He goes like, you know, we, we they obviously aren't listening to the podcast because, as we always <laughs> say, there are runs and there are the right kinds of runs. It actually works in reverse. There's dismissals and then the wrong kinds of dismissals. And there's the wrong yeah. kind of memeing behavior that England are partaking in. It's getting hit in the dick. It's, a, it's your opening bowler yeah. bowling off his in sunnies. You know, it's Rory mm. Burns' salad and just general way that he stands. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and, and now we have this. I mean, yeah, on the other hand, it's just Richardson bowled, starting to bowl quick and just pushed him back. And actually, a technical analysis would show that Joss Butler played really effectively from his crease all game. That aside, yeah. <laughs> he just yeah. got it wrong. Yeah. <laughs> that aside, um, yeah. And thank and thank God for Zinger Bales. I mean, you know, it just adds a, just adds another context, you know, in this technological era that we're living in. I mean, I think it was at Adelaide Over when Mark Ward did that against South Africa, wasn't it? In the 90s, where he, he basically turned around and kicked him over way worse than what Butler did today. Um, but then the umpires, like, didn't give him out because no one actually saw what happened. But when those bad boys are lighting up, like it's, uh, you know, heading to a club, like that was, uh, it's, uh, it's, it adds a visceral element to it, uh, which is what the Ashes basically is, just all visceral moments. So. Oh, that Mark Wall one. I think he dropped his bat onto the stumps, and it, it was he was sort of shaken by <laughs> oh, the ball that had right. been yeah, bowled to him. Was it, was it Pollock yeah, or yeah. something? And uh, it was Pollock, yeah. And like Cronier was absolutely losing it. Um, Ooh, yeah, as, incandescent, as, as incandescent. I think he like he kicked the door of the match referee or something as well. Like he, there was like you know footage of the indent. But the problem with Mark Wall was that like because mm. of his reputation, you were kind of like, yeah, but he's pretty, he's pretty laissez fair, old June. You know, he might have just dropped the bat. You know, <laughs> again, something, yeah. that's yeah. something June would do. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. yeah, it was. Look, before then, he goes, um, you know, it started well for Australia. Pope nicked off, uh, yeah. and um, and Stokes was basically batting on the stumps. Like no one could bat yeah. deeper. And Lyon, yeah. I've never seen Lyon actually beat someone with a straight ball, but Stokes was so <laughs> far back, it didn't have much to do. It was all looking good. Yeah. Then the pitch died, and uh, Wokes and Butler batted really well. Carey, you know, was taking the ball at his shins. Um, the ball yeah. seemed to be slowing up deluxe, and yeah. that's why those guys were yeah. batting from their crease. I bet they didn't need to get forward; they could just wait on it. Mate, they, they yeah. even they got through. Um, they got through Stark and Richardson with the new ball as well, and. Um, I mean, especially start, they got through Stark spell with the new ball, uh, the second new ball, and you started to wonder. You know, I was listening to SEN radio and they asked Athers, you know, you're starting to you're starting to dream, and he sort of laughed and went, "Oh yeah, always." I uh, couldn't really tell what he meant, hmm. but that's the kind of coping mechanism <laughs> that cricketers develop. Um, kind of have it mm. both ways, uh, but yeah, but yeah, mm. and then and then Butler went, and it was game over. They got to bowl at Broad's body and Anderson's head for a bit. That was fun, and then it was over. Yeah, yeah. I feel uncomfortable watching like Australia bowl to Broad and Anderson because it's like, I mean, Anderson is 40 in June, I think, next year. He's 40 next year, so which makes him 39. Um, <laughs> that's how it works. <laughs> uh, Getting into some arsehole stuff here. But uh, but <laughs> but uh, it makes me very uncomfortable. They, like, they, feel like they, ne- they feel the need to set him up. I don't know if that's true for either batsman. <laughs> like just, I think if you get it down there enough, I think an edge or a bold or an edge, like it just comes into play. And I think you need to actually push him back. It feels a bit tortuous, you know? Uh, give me the second thing. All right, here goes. Just want to ask you straight up, you know, were we nervous? Uh, not really, but I'd be lying if I said I wasn't having a look. Like, <laughs> there's a I spectrum mean, of like, nerves. I would have thought you'd yeah, be more exactly. binary on this. You know, you'd either just be absolutely not. I mean, for me, not a chance in the world was I nervous. But I was standing back, arms folded, speed dealers of on, course. chewing gum. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. You know, no problem. Like, this is cricket. You know, it's a funny game, obviously, but no issues from mm. my end. Inevitable. Um, you know, uh, when, I just, I, <laughs> oh, yeah. and by that I, I mean, just, yes, I was. 
Yeah, could no, of course. No, I know I know what that's all really communicating. Uh I, I felt like um going into the last session, like they they they're gonna create two chances. You know, like it seemed it seemed silly not to be able to do that. I, I, I sort of felt like again with the first innings things, if Root doesn't get out first uh, sorry, last ball of last night, might have gone pretty close today, you know, uh of, of Stokes that bats a little bit longer. I don't know. I mean, Wokes batted superbly, really. And he got an he got the ball of the day. That, maybe the ball of the match. That was a fucking peach from uh Richardson. Jai Richardson. Um but uh, there's there's a weird stat now with Wokes where he was the only player he's the only player in this series to get into double figures in all four innings for England. He is the third leading run scorer for England in this series behind Root and Milan. Obviously, it's not really the stat you want for the guy batting eight, eight, seven, uh, eight. Um, so, uh, but you know, but fuck, he he looks pretty competent. I mean, he's. He's there for bowling, but and his bowling hasn't been great with the Kookaburra. But, uh, but you know, when him and Butler are the crease, if they just get to T, they'll probably get to T. Then there's four wickets in the hut. Then, then I'm probably like, this is going to be close. I'd still, I still back Australia to create sort of four or five chances. But was I nervous? Uh, I mean, I just. It, it, the, the, like England, England aren't good enough. I don't think. Like they were so, again, they're so far behind in the game. Like I don't know. They just felt like something was going to happen. So uh, yeah, petrified. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I knew what you were communicating there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm very happy for Chris Wokes to like average 200 with the ball and pick up the odd 20 with the bat. No problem at all in terms of a contribution to the game. Absolutely, I, I think I think he has I think he has to play in Melbourne. Uh, you got to just yeah. given the the state of the batting. Him, yeah, yeah, they really need that 20. Uh, yeah, no. I, mean, ca- I think in sorry. Oh yeah, come yeah, Cam Green. No, Cam Green today at Smith eventually gave him a bowl and he just said after the game, caught this before we just went to Airy. Um, so Smith uh, advised that the guys inside said they didn't want him to bowl at all today. Uh, so Smith said, I held him back as long as I could, but I wanted okay. to have a little crack with him. Um, <laughs> and, that, and that's just in the sheds afterwards, just have a, have a, have a crack. Uh, well, obviously, obviously, Cam Green's under, he's under 14, so he, uh, he, he can only bowl sort of six overs in a weekend. Exactly. Um, yeah, he, he doesn't get a certain amount of balls at training. Um, you know, he can't do. He has to do uh, two cardio sessions for every weight session, as he just blows out. Yeah. Um, so all these things, you know, have to factor in. Mm. Um, it was it it was strange. I figured that I figured that he he wasn't allowed to bowl um, because of religious reasons. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it being a Sunday and all, except today's Monday. What? Um, but but he's fuck. He's uh. I mean, some runs wouldn't go astray from Cam, mm. but uh, fuck, his bowling's good. Bowling's really good. Yeah, well, he's got he's got root twice now, starting to move the ball. Yeah, I, I think he's, mm. yeah. Um, yeah, you, you, you can see there's a play there. Uh, okay, I, I think anything just, else I around think I just, Yeah, just, just to wrap it up, I think in, in Adelaide and in Brisbane, there's been moments, in Brisbane it was like when Root and Milan were together uh, physically, um, and then during during stage of this Adelaide game where you're like, they've got themselves back, like, I think England are fighting as best they can. To me, they just look they look fucking cooked, which is the whole which is the third point. But like I think that that they are fighting. There's there is some fight there, but then something fucking absurd happens, you know? And that's like that's that's the butler thing today. I mean, like hit wicket, like kick them over. I mean, it's just you know, like they get themselves to a spot where you might mm, maybe and then something ridiculous happens. So uh yeah. All right, he goes, uh third thing. Five nil on the cards. It's difficult to see where this England team can win a game. Um, Melbourne, Australia lost a few Boxing Day Test matches uh, or, or failed to win them. I feel like that's right. Anyway, I mean, obviously they lost to India last year. Rahane got some, got a hundred. I think it might be his last Test hundred. Now I think about it. Um, but uh, but this. <laughs> Before the test match, we're talking about is this England's best chance? Pink ball, Broad and Anderson, no Cummins, no Hazelwood. Uh, and they've been fucking pumped, really. Uh, Sydney and Melbourne, I don't know. But like, can this single team actually beat Australia? Like, I'm not, not like sucking Australia off there. Like, I just, just think that, like, the thing that this England team is, that they, they just look cooked and they're so tired and they just look, it's just manifesting in no balls, wickets off no balls, drop catches, hit wickets. You know, it just, I don't, th- so so therefore I don't think England, can, England can't win a game. So it's it's either it's either four nil or five nil. That's I what mean, I think. Really, that's what I think. I, I think I think the stats going around are that like Joe Root needs to score one hundred and fifty plus 
for England to win a game. So, I mean, if there is a path to victory for England, it involves Root going absolutely large. And, look, I wouldn't mm. ro- rule out... Uh, I already think that he's batted so well this year. He's missed out on a couple of hundreds already here. Like, the, there may be some compensation runs in the offing for yeah. Root. Yep. I, I wouldn't yep. be surprised if Root snapped in terms of run scoring, as in... <laughs> He snapped right. and he did something like what Alastair Cook did in Melbourne um, a couple of Ashes series ago and uh, yeah. just made fucking yeah, yeah. whatever the fuck that was. Was it 244 or yeah. something like that? 2-2. Two, two. Yeah, I think that's right, yeah. yeah. Um, or something like that. He's okay. And uh, <laughs> But but yeah, other, other than that, it's hard to it's hard to see a route to victory. I mean, you're expecting mm. Cummins and Hazelwood <laughs> to come back into the side. There's a question mm. there. He goes, uh, if, if Hazelwood isn't fit... Who has won that third seamer spot out of Jai Richardson and Michael Nisa? Do you have a view? I think that they will play Richardson because he was first picked and sort of Nisa came in because of COVID and they want Richardson. Richardson hasn't had a bad game. I don't, I don't think either. Richardson Mate, got four wickets in the, no, se- in the second dig. He got five for. They got the last wicket. Yeah. Yeah, He's okay, well, he plays five. in. So, yeah. Yeah, okay. He got that extra wicket, and that's a five thing. It's a five for yeah, and, and that's he, actually and he that's hit the a milestone. six as well. So yeah, uh, that's yeah, a good point. yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like between getting a forty nine and a fifty. Yeah. He hit a six in both innings as well. Brutal swipe. He bat. did. So yeah. so that's a lock. So that's, that's a lock. Well, that's a good point. Um, uh, Kerry O'Keefe on comps that I was talking about bringing Scott Boland. I mean, yeah, why not? Let's give everyone a game. Yeah, I, I'd love to see Scott Boland just trunk like just fucking roll his shoulders in on a flatty, hit the wicket yeah. hard, get you know. Two for fifty-eight off twenty-one overs, and everybody just get yeah. around him, and he just breaks <laughs> his back like Jackson Bird did, just to save <laughs> Cummins and Hazelwood who are riding yeah. in on chariots with fucking yeah. feathers being <laughs> waved. Yeah. Just feathers, not actually not the yeah. big, not the big fans. Yeah. Everyone's just got one little feather. With a feather, yeah, I'd from like a magpie. That. Cummins is now a fucking pharaoh, big gold headdress. Yeah. Fuck anyway, yeah. I'm just I'm just sort of saying some fan fiction stuff out loud. Um, yeah, f- f- I, I, I don't know about five nil. I mean, just it's hard to see anything else at the moment. Hashtag RTUC. He goes thanks to Akko. Uh, this is from Abhishek Vaishnav. Thanks, Abhishek. Uh, boys, please, please give England players some slack. They've played most during this COVID times, and we all know how tough it is to be in the bubble. They are tired. They are very tired. They are really, really, really tired. And we can see that. So let's give them some slack. What do you say? All of those things that Abhishek said is true. They look fucking exhausted. They're over the bubbles. Omicron's gone on the backgrounds. They've probably getting some they probably go back to their phones after every night and there's just bad news in England Central. They're now talking about bringing in some restrictions into these bubbles. In this series, they've got to go to Hobart for the last game, obviously, now, which that their border restrictions are looking a little bit 50-50. They're exhausted. They've gone from the I- two IPLs, you know, the, uh, India away, India home, New Zealand in between, IPL World, uh, sorry, IPL World Cup, yeah, a T20 World Cup into That's an Ashes series, which we're all shooting towards. Australia hasn't fucking played a game in 10 years. We're fresh. Um, but it's the Ashes, so... Like if I if I don't feel the visceral things in my soul from within me, in exactly the same way that English people would be if it was the other way around, it's just not. You have to. This is what the sport is. This is why this is the big. This is what this is why this is the bigger series because of the history between the cultures and the nations and all the test series before it. You have to live it. You have to feel it. And so if I don't feel the things about you know the wetness of this England team and the absurdity of how they're getting out or not getting out or dropping catches or whatever, then what am I doing it for? Like what what's in it for me? You know. I to- I totally understand. In- what you're saying is it'd be disrespectful to cut England some slack. They don't want any slack mm. cut. What if you were England and some Aussies started cutting your slack because of your year? <laughs> I mean, that is, that's bad news, you know? Yeah. I mean, I take Abhishek's point. All of those things are very valid. And yeah, of uh, course. Omicron, as you say, is building up here big styles. And it's we're yeah, at the moment deluxe. now. Deluxe. And uh, <laughs> we're at the moment where... You, you you're hanging out for the news every day to see whether this thing's going to swarm us, and you know England right. could, in a couple of days' time, England could cry off as they say at home two nil, come back, see if they can win it. Yeah, uh, exactly. So, bring bring a archer, Ollie Stone. Exact, 
<laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, just like yeah. Woods playing. Yeah, that's right. I'll yeah. have Stokes back for that India series next year. And um, yeah. <laughs> was he playing actually or was that Archer? Anyway, so yeah, I, 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 I agree with you. I think you've got to you got to take the the wins when you can get them. We're going to be over there in in you know no time soon, and it'll be nipping around, and we'll be struggling. We'll be hearing from them. I have to say though, he goes, you know, there was a silver lining considering England pulling off a very unlikely draw, and that was putting the speak pipe out there again. Because I, I do want, I do want to see and hear the English crow. You know, yeah, I, I just yeah, I think it would have been funny. It would have been very funny to you know. Encourage comment from the English if they'd managed to draw this game. As it turns out, they oh, didn't. Yeah. Fuck yeah! Because it's all meat and wet and wet and feeble and um and all, all those things you said. And it's two nil. The, the series is a reflection of of how both teams have played. And um you know now we're fucking around experimenting with players and stuff. England's got fucking <laughs> Dove and Milan bowling leggies. It's all fucking memeified. It's third grade shit. Mm. You called it many many months ago. Um yeah, I, I think we've actually got to hold the line. And hold them to account. It's the only way they're going to get better. Grind them into the yeah. dirt with bad yeah. takes at the end of every day. That's right. We're actually trying to make them better. We're, mm. we're holding them to account. It's the. It's actually <laughs> their own system. It's the Westminster system. It's the adversarial system. You chip away at each other's <laughs> argument, and hopefully the truth bubbles up. Now we've we've seen through Trump that actually doesn't work, and Fox Media and stuff. No. But nevertheless, that's that's um, <laughs> what we're shooting for. And you know what you and I are saying, mainly you. It will help England in the long run. And in fact, if they win the next Asher series, it'll be your fault. That's right. Uh, and just judging by my notifications on uh, Twitter today, there are some very angry people. Um, all right. Uh, that'll do, Pez. Uh, we've got the main podcast tomorrow afternoon. I uh, hope you guys have enjoyed uh, the last five days of uh, our reviews here. Uh, hit a like, hit a subscribe if you are so inclined. We'll see you guys next time on the interwebs. Cheers. Cheers.